this is everything that I'm putting in the bread. Chia seeds. We love chia seeds. Uh, sunflower seeds germinated. Tomatoes, onions, nutritional yeast, which is very, very good for you, very high in vitamins and minerals. Garlic, sea salt, and a little olive oil. Now, there's two bread recipes that are on our kitchen's blog page. They're up there now. All the recipes are on blythefraud.com. One of them is this onion dry chia. So I mixed this chia with water for, for this spicy tomato bread recipe. But the one that's just onion chia and um, sunflower seeds looks a little different. It's this. It's also very tasty. So you can do a really easy, you know, three ingredient bread, or you can add tomatoes and jalapeno and um, do it, you know, make it a little bit more complicated, but it's not too bad. We just put in the onion into the food processor. We put in the tomatoes. Remember how great onions and tomatoes are for our skin, really high in silicone and sulfur. We're going to put that um, nutritional yeast in there. This is a really super great source of B12, especially for vegans. It's one of the only non-animal sources of B12. So then we put a little garlic in there. I'm going to go with the chia that is soaked in water. We're going to put that in there. And then I always germinate my seeds before I use them. So sunflower seeds don't actually require that much germination. You can actually just germinate them for a couple hours. I did it overnight. But we put that in there. I still get to use the stack And then we just mix it up. Really easy. Sunflower seeds, excellent for the bath. Excellent source of protein. We're going to mix it all up, and then we're going to spread it on a dehydrator tray. When I make this bread, you'll see you can make, like, six sandwiches from one sheet. So you have bread ready for a while. And I didn't take the time on the show to blend it up as much as I would at home. So there's a little bit of large pieces in there. But what I do is I just smooth it out really evenly. And not, not all the onions um, blend it up, but that's okay. And then I try to just make the ends nice as I can. I usually make it about a quarter inch thick. And then you dehydrate it for about 10 hours on one side. Then you'll take it out and you'll remove that pufflet sheet. And then you just cut it. And then you just cut it into whatever sandwich size you want. See that? Neato! And it tastes really good. And I'm going to have you try it in a minute, but I'm going to make the hummus first. So I'm going to have you, I'm going to put a little hummus in it. So sprouting uh, garbanzo beans is really easy. It's really easy to make a raw hummus. It doesn't need to be cooked. So these are the dry garbanzo beans. And you soak them. These are my favorite way to soak garbanzo beans. You know, these salad spinners. Because you can fill them with water, and then it's really easy to just take it out. Oh, cut it. Rinse and soak. And then, you know, with garbanzo beans, you soak it fully in water for usually about 30 hours. I do more than 24 hours, sometimes even 48 hours, but you definitely want to change the water. As soon as you see a little bit of color to the water, change it and make it fresh. Because garbanzo beans, they like the fresh water for sure. And then you can just leave it in here in the fridge after they're sprouted and they'll sprout. So I put about the four cups of garbanzo beans in there. And then what really makes the hummus, of course, is the tahini. You guys know what tahini is? Simple, easy, just sesame seeds. Just blended period sesame seeds. If there's anything else, this is a great brand. I was on this is raw tahini. You want raw tahini. So you're getting those enzymes. So if there's anything else in the ingredients besides sesame seeds, I think you can get yourself another tahini. So we put about three tablespoons of tahini in there. This is how we do it. And then for fun, I thought we'd make a red pepper hummus today. Because it, this is, you know, like I said, I'm teaching you guys techniques uh, on the show. So the recipes, you know, there's a hundred different variations of recipes that you can do. So I'm going to make red pepper hummus. So we put a little red pepper in there. Of course, olive oil. It's all about the oleo, and we're using a cold-pressed organic olive oil. This comes from Essential Living Foods. I love some cold-pressed organic olive oil. That was probably a little much. And then we blend, and that's it. And then the end product. I won't take too much time blending, but the end product looks something like this. And we, you know, we blend it all up, and then hummus is lovely to serve a little olive oil on top of it as well with a little paprika. Certainly the red pepper hummus will be, you know, slightly red. 
And then for a sandwich, we're just going to put it all together. So this is the bread. Yum. And now you can take this bread and just serve it with, you know, bread and hummus. You can obviously just do cucumber, celery, carrots for the hummus. So we just make a sandwich, and this is a great sandwich to take to go. Um, I love, I, uh, well, let's put a little red romaine. So we'll put a little red romaine on there. And then I love sunflower sprouts. Uh, we showed you how to make sunflower sprouts, how to grow your own. Uh, and one of the shows in, in the first season. Let's do that again. We'll do tray sprouting next time. We're doing jar sprouting today, but next time we'll do tray sprouting because I want to show wheatgrass sprouts. Wheatgrass is so, so good for you. So, so good for you. Um, and then we'll just add a little avocado. Beautiful job, Katrina, by the way, slicing the avocado. Gorgeous, darling. Come on up, Erica. And I'm going to do a proper napkin for you. It's like rolling with it. Good? Is it yummers? If you want to go.